Okay, so let us continue our discussion on uh, the response due to arbitrary loading and if you recall we have already uh, derived the expression for what we call Duhamel integral. Now today we are going to solve this numerically and see how we can implement in MATLAB. But before that let us quickly go through the uh, theory that we have derived just brush up the expressions and what we mean by this integral. So, we have this s of system and then it is excited by some arbitrary forcing function and we know the stiffness, damping, mass and the degrees of freedom is x of t and forcing function is f of t. Now, if you recall we develop the argument is that we have a arbitrary forcing function and then so at time point say tau we consider a differential element so obviously at this location so, this is our d tau at a distance tau. Obviously, the forcing function is f tau d tau and that we multiply at this point what we do? We actually put our h of t at this point it will be t minus tau. So, this is the impulse response function. So, we multiply this by h t minus tau and then integrate this from 0 to t what we get is basically the response at time point. So, that is the expression we have derived and what is the expression for impulse response function? H of t is 1 by m omega d e to the power minus eta omega n t sin omega d t. So, that is the expression. Now, f t the forcing function is arbitrary and for this forcing function we have to numerically evaluate this uh, response. So, that is the objective for today's discussion. Now, for that what we have to do? We have to find out the expression of this Duhamel integral. So, uh, for that what we do? Uh, we put this expression for impulse response function in the original Duhamel integral and see uh, how does it look like and what we can simplify further to evaluate it. So, what we have here is 0 to t then in place of h t minus tau what we have? We have 1 by m omega d e to the power minus eta omega n t minus tau sin omega d times t minus tau and this multiplied by f tau d tau. Mm -hmm. Now, if that is the case, then we can simplify this expression. So, if we open this e to the power minus eta omega n t times e to the power eta omega n tau and then it is multiplied by we can open this. So, we have sin omega d t times cos omega d tau minus cos omega d t times sin 
omega d tau whole multiplied by the forcing function f tau d tau. So, we can simplify this because just note small t is the limit. So, we can take this expression out of the integral. So, what we will do 1 by m omega d e to the power minus eta omega n t then we have sin omega d t times integral 0 to t e to the power eta omega n tau cos omega d tau times f tau d tau. Then minus we have cos of omega d t times integral 0 to t e to the power eta omega n tau times sin omega d tau multiplied by f tau d tau. Now, obviously, this is uh, an integral you can see we have a arbitrary forcing function. We cannot solve it in closed form. So, we have to go for uh, any um, numerical scheme available for uh, evaluating this integral. We will use trapezoidal rule. You can also adopt Simpson one third rule or any other approach to evaluate this integral. So, we will use trapezoidal rule in a minute. So, what we can do? We can write this expression Duhamel integral as 1 by m omega d e to the power minus eta omega n t within bracket sin of omega d t times say this part I just mark it as a tau minus cos omega d t times say b tau. So, what is the expression for a tau? a tau is 0 to t e to the power eta omega n tau cos omega d tau times f tau d tau. Similarly, we also know what is b tau? It is integral 0 to t e to the power eta omega n tau sin omega d tau f tau d tau. So, that is the simplified expression for Duhamel integral. So, for every t if we set then uh, we can evaluate this a tau and b tau numerically. Once we do that, we can find out the expression for x of t. So, that is precisely what we are going to do uh, in MATLAB and that will also help you to see how we can write MATLAB code particularly for the beginners. So, let us start MATLAB coding for this Duhamel integral. So, let us uh, write a function file. So, we have function that will return the response x of t, then this is uh, equal to the function name, we call it Duhamel integration. 
and then for that we have to give the input arguments. So, we have to define the mass, then stiffness and then critical damping ratio and then we have to give the excitations. That means, we have to define the forcing function f of t, we write it f underscore t here for every t. So, these are the input arguments we have to solve the Duhamel integral and for that let us first evaluate the natural frequency as you know it is square root of k by m. So, that is the natural frequency and once we evaluate the natural frequency we can also evaluate the damped natural frequency. So, we have omega n star square root of 1 minus eta square. So, that is the damped natural frequency we evaluate. Now, uh, we have to uh, solve the Duhamel integral and for that uh, let us first identify how many data points we have in time because we have to run a loop and for every uh, time point we have to calculate the integral. So, for that let us first check how many time points. So, what we do we define this n t that is the number of time point and uh, length of t it returns basically the number of time point we have. So, once we have it <laughs> then let us initialize the displacement at the output. So, initialize with zeros and then uh, we have to run a for loop. So, for <coughs> so, we run the for loop from second time point. So, i i starts from 2, it goes up to the number of time point we have. The reason is because at the initial point obviously, it will start from uh, 0. So, uh, that is the reason we start from the second point and then uh, for that then now what we do uh, we start the loop for Duhamel integral. So, what we have to do? So, t uh, we start from t 0. So, we, if you recall the integral is from 0 to tau right sorry 0 to t. So, t 0 that is 0 point. So, it starts with the first value and then it goes up to say t star. So, that is as we progress in the loop we keep on changing this t star value. So, this is up to the limit we perform the Duhamel integral. Now, uh, we have to define tau. So, for that we define tau. So, it starts from, so we can define the other way. So, we consider t from 1 to the iterative indicator. In this case, it is i. So, we go up to 1 to i. So, tau starts from first point it goes up to the this indicator i i. I do not use i simply because uh, complex number is also defined by i. So, avoid that. Now, for this tau we also have to find out what is f tau. That again we define as f t we start from the first point go up to the limit which is i i. Now, once we have it, we have the expression that I showed you. Let me share that also because uh, then it will be easier for you to uh, follow. So, we have the expression here you can see. Um, so, we have integral, if you look at integral we have e to the power eta omega n tau times cos omega d tau 
times f tau and that we have to integrate between 0 to t and in this case we are using trapezoidal rule. So, we first define this function e to the power eta omega n tau cos omega d tau times f tau. Once we define that function we call it say f 1 and the next integral you have e to the power eta omega n tau sin omega d tau times f tau we call it f 2. So, let us define these two functions and then we will see how we can numerically integrate this using trapezoidal rule. So, what we have is exponential of eta omega n tau and then times we have cos omega d tau times we have f tau. So, that is the first function f 1. Similarly, we define f 2. We have exponential eta star omega n star tau then sin omega d and then times tau then we have to multiply this by f tau. Okay. So, now we are ready we have to evaluate even if we consider the expression. So, what we have is a tau 0 to t e to the power eta omega n tau cos omega d tau f tau d tau. So, we have to use trapezoidal rule to evaluate this expression. So, let us uh, do that. So, a tau will be equal to we have to use trapezoidal rule. So, trap z is the common and for that we have to define the x and y in this case x is tau and y is f 1. So, that is a tau similarly we can also define what is b tau. Now, what we have here is uh, again tau and then instead of f 1 we have to call f 2. So, we have evaluated a tau and b tau and then finally, we have to evaluate the Duhamel integral and for that uh, that is the solution. So, x of t at i i point will be 1 by m omega d times we have to multiply that with exponential if you recall it is minus eta omega n t star point up to which we integrate right. And then uh, that will be multiplied by a function um, sin omega d t it is t star which is multiplied by a tau then minus cos omega d t star times b tau. So, that is the solution we have using Duhamel integral. So, that is the function file. So, for every time point this i i will change and accordingly this t star will also change and then we will integrate this function um, over this complete range. So, let us save it. <coughs> And then again we have to write a function that calls. So, so 
So, we define mass equal to say 10 unit, stiffness equal to say 100 unit, eta is equal to say 5 percent critical damping ratio. So, it is 0 0.05 and then uh, we have to apply the forcing function. So, for that uh, let us define a forcing function. So, we define T, T is equal to say 0 to 20, we define the time point, it starts from 0, goes up to 20 and with an increment of 0 0.01 second. So, that is the time and then f of t we define sin say 5 t. We can also apply some amplitude say 1.5 times sin of 5 t. So, that is the forcing function, it is not arbitrary. So, I will show you an arbitrary forcing function also in a minute. But for the time being, so let us define and consider this uh, forcing function f of t is given. So, we assume that we do not know this expression, although we generate the forcing function using this expression. So, f of tau, sorry f of t, we have to now pass it to solve this Duhamel integral. So, for that, let us copy this. So, if you look at the argument, we have defined m, we have defined k, we have defined eta, then t and then f of t, right. Then once we get it, let us plot the function. So, let us first plot the forcing function. And then we also plot the response. And then let us run this function. we give it a name we give the name as called duhamel and then run it so what you can see is we have the forcing function which again i repeat we consider it as a arbitrary forcing function because it is defined in terms of different time points the magnitude of the forcing function is known although it comes from a sinusoidal function. And then uh, using this function we use Duhamel integral to find out the response and then in this uh, right screen you can see the response due to Duhamel integral. Now what you can see here is the moment it starts there is a disturbance initially and then finally as time progresses it actually converges to a solution. So, if we uh, solve it for a bigger time window say let us put it 100 and then uh, see what happens. And you can clearly see the impact. So, uh, we have the input as a sinusoidal function and then using that if we solve initially we can see the transient spot and then as time progresses because we have a damping given by eta in this case it is 5 percent critical damping ratio and then 
as time progresses, you can see the initial transient part dies out and we are left with only the steady state part which is also sinusoidal because we have a linear system and that we excite by a sinusoidal input. This is what we actually learned when we derived the closed form solution. So, you can also verify that and uh, see how this Duhamel integral works. Now, we will consider a um, arbitrary forcing function. So, for that uh, we have a forcing function which is L centro. So, let me call this function and for that what we have here we actually load that L centro function. It is exactly the same file. So, what we have uh, introduced here is these three lines you can see. So, what is this uh, input file? Uh, it is the L centro earthquake ground motion. So, that I will show you in a minute how does it look like. So, for an, this earthquake we measured the acceleration and that acceleration data for different time points we have in this file and we will read that file and there we will have no closed form expressions and that acceleration will first convert into uh, the force that we apply over the structure. In fact, as we progress in this course, we will derive the equation of motion for this type of problem. But for the time being, uh, you can see that second line, so T that reads the first column from the L centro file. So, that is the time against which we record the ground acceleration, which is in the second column. Now, once we have these two from this L centro file and then what we do, uh, we define again the system and then uh, we define the forcing function. In this case, it is minus m times the ground acceleration. For the time being, let us uh, consider this expression. We will derive this expression as we progress. Now, then what we do? We call the Duhamel integral the same uh, file, function file and then once we get the solution, we plot it. First, we plot the L centro ground motion and then the response that we get from the Duhamel integral. So, let us quickly run this and see what we get. And as you can see here on your screen, we have the solution ready. So, the first subplot shows the L centro ground acceleration. You can see this is the type of acceleration we often record when we face an earthquake ground motion. So, that is the arbitrary forcing function and for that no closed form uh, expression is available. So, we cannot solve uh, straight away and then we apply the Duhamel integral and the moment we apply the Duhamel integral, we have the solution due to this L centro ground motion. Now, as we progress in this course, we will actually verify this uh, uh, Duhamel integral whether this solution is correct or not, but for that we have to go through the theory. So, let me first derive the equation of motion for this type of uh, problem where we have a SDOP system with support motion and then uh, I will come back to this solution again what we get today from Duhamel integral and then we will compare and we will see whether the result we get from the Duhamel integral is correct or not. For that what we will do, we will use some inbuilt function, inbuilt option in MATLAB that we can um, consider for uh, uh, the solution of this uh, type of arbitrary forcing function and then we will compare with this result. So, with that let us uh, close today's discussion. The takeaway point today is that how to implement the Duhamel integral uh, numerically and find out the response for any arbitrary forcing functions. So, we will continue on this topic further. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.